This is 8.3 still. We're going to talk briefly about the theorem of Pappus. This was known in antiquity to Pappus, a Greek um, Ionian mathematician. Um, it's actually very cool, like, you wouldn't expect it result about how to connect volume and centroids. Um, so to illustrate it, I'm going to just draw here basically how we want to think of a torus. Um, you may not have heard that word before. A torus is a donut. <laughs> I mean, informally, but that's the shape that you should think of. But really what, you, what it is, is if you think about a circle that's laying on one side of the y-axis with maybe its center located on the x-axis, I'm not sure, it doesn't matter, and you create a solid of revolution by revolving it around the y-axis, then you get a torus where its center is at the exact um, opposite side of the y-axis. And my drawing's not so great, but every point travels a circle around let me use a different color for that one because that one's going to be end up being significant. Travels a circle around the that axis, um, and it generates this solid that looks sort of like a like a donut. Mm -hmm. And so the point of this is that in order to find that volume, we could perform the calculation that we usually do, and when we're um, uh, using the slicing method, the disk method, the washer method, all that sort of stuff, right? Now, we have a theorem that um, stated sounds like it doesn't give us a lot, but it actually does give us quite a bit. So given an area, or a region, sorry, of area A lying entirely on one side of an axis, the volume of the solid of revolution is the product of the area A by the distance traveled by the centroid, the center of mass. So if we think about a, a uh, torus, for instance, as being generated by this planar lamina, which is a, um, which is a circle, okay? Think about that area, that cross-sectional area, and the distance traveled by the centroid. What this theorem says is that the volume is equal to that area times the distance traveled by the centroid, which I'm going to put as d, uh, d over line. The area of that circle is going to be pi r squared, and the distance traveled by the centroid is going to be 2 pi um, x bar, where x bar is the locate how 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 wide that so. This torus has two components to it, basically. It's how um, large the radius of the cross-section itself and how far away the center of that cross-section is from, um, from the axis of rotation. So all told, this is going to be pi squared, r squared, x bar. Pretty cool stuff, huh? But this generalizes more to other cool kinds of areas. And whether we want to use integration or not, um, we can we can still apply the theorem of Pappus. So this this has actually a lot of utility um, when we have an area that's a simple geometric figure. 
and when the centroid is easily found. Typically, um, symmetry, we need symmetry here. So our example here, we're going to use the theorem of Pappus. to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the triangle with vertices two, three, two, five, and Five four about the x-axis. So let's draw it briefly. Now, ordinarily we would be using something like the washer method, or we can use this the method of shells. Um, but why don't we resort to using the theorem of Pappus and some more rudimentary um, techniques. So here's the point two three, two five, and five four. Okay, so this is the circle. This is the cross section. Oops. I'll make that. Oh, I'm not making that very straight. There we go. So that's the cross sectional area, and we're rotating that about the uh, x axis. Okay. So you can imagine that it would look like coming down like that, kind of like a, a really pointy donut, right? So finding the exact location of the centroid isn't necessary though. Here's why, here's why. All we need here is the location, the Y coordinate of the, and that is not too hard to find. Why? Well, we're assuming that this has a uniform density. And by symmetry, that means the centroid is along the line y equals 4. Yeah, we can use arguments like that, as long as it's backed up by something, right? So we know that it's a triangle that's isosceles. If we didn't know that, we couldn't use that knowledge. But we do know that. So we know the, the y coordinate of the centroid. And so we'll know the distance traveled by the centroid, which is then the bar is two pi y bar, which is um, two pi times eight, 16 pi, right? The area is just as easy to find where you don't need to resort to any calculus here. All we need to use is the area of a triangle. So if we take this length to be the base, and this length to be the height, we know that this is gonna be 1 half times 2 times 2, or sorry, 3, which ends up being 3 unit squared. All together, we end up with the volume is A times the distance traveled by the centroid. Oh, I'm sorry, that's, that's not an 8. I'm so sorry. That's supposed to be, I got ahead of myself. It's to be a 4. That makes that 8. And so that means the area times the distance traveled by the centroid is 3 times 8 pi, or 24 pi. That's the volume of this solid of revolution, which we would have otherwise had to find using um, an area between two curves calculation and then a whole bunch of other mess. But there it is. Isn't that nice?